Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing this video on the thermal nuclear reactor for you today. This is the last video of the nuclear energy topic. So there's going to be a playlist with all the lessons on nuclear energy, okay, or nuclear physics. This is actually the second time I'm doing this video. The first one, the sound, I don't know, there was something with the sound. Anyway, so um, I'm going to be telling you most about the nuclear power stations, including uh, which use or generate electricity by using fission but let me just tell you that due to the problems with fission which you're going to learn uh, once you continue watching this video uh, we are attempting on earth to get fusion power okay now fusion power uses two smaller nuclei that fuse together into a large one. Now, if you want this to happen, you would have to have conditions similar to the conditions in a star where fusion happens naturally. Now, for you to get conditions in a star, you would have to have very high temperatures and pressure, so your small nuclei could um, move so fast that they could overcome the electrostatic force of repulsion because they repel since they are both positively charged and fuse together into a small a larger nuclei okay so you need high pressures and temperatures it's very difficult to get them on earth although we would have no problems with greenhouse gases or radioactive waste but you know is not easy to do so our international thermal nuclear experimental reactor that started in 2016 at least the last time that i looked inter was using more uh, energy so the energy input was higher than the energy output because uh, we had to put in more energy to actually get fusion but this is what happens in the earlier stages hopefully is going to get better very soon okay now nuclear power stations and here i'm talking about power stations that use fission okay so how do they look like so first they have the reactor okay now the reactor everything that is inside the reactor is inside very thick concrete walls the reason for this is because out of the radiation that i can get gamma radiation is the one that has the highest range and can only be stopped by thick concrete so uh, by getting a large concrete wall or uh, thick lead walls then i'm avoiding that any radiation comes out of it okay i have the reactor vessel now the reactor vessel has fuel rods which they have the fissional material and they have control rods to which i'm going to tell you a little bit more about them okay but as the name says they control the fission reaction they control the rate of reaction they are made of boron and the boron absorbs the neutrons then i have a coolant that is going to pass through a steam generator now the coolant heats up because of fission and therefore is going to heat up the water in the steam generator the water boils and becomes steam steam is going to drive a turbine that is attached to a generator the generator that has uh, magnets and coils and because the generator is going to have the magnet passing um, moving around the coils is going to generate electricity which is going to be spread around the country through the national grid just to try to make the system a little bit more efficient some of the steam in the turbine is going to pass through the condenser or as much as we can actually through the condenser so it can get condensed into water and go back to the steam generator on the reactor vessel i have a little bit more detail on this video which is not mine but i'm going to put the link um, for this video in the description where they are going to tell you that not all neutrons are going to be ready to produce fission because some of them are moving too fast and have a very high energy so i need to use something a moderator to slow them down so they can do fission later on okay now the thing that happens is whenever i have fission some of the fission neutrons are going to escape from the fissionable material without causing any fission and some are going to be absorbed by other nuclei without causing any fission this means that if i want a chain reaction to occur i need that the mass of uranium-235 the fuel or it could be uranium-238 or plutonium-239 the isotope must be greater than a minimum mass known as a critical mass okay 
If the mass of the fissionable, uh, fissionable sorry, material is less than the critical mass needed, too many of the fission neutrons are going to escape because the surface area to mass ratio of the material is too high, so they are going to escape. Therefore, if I want to get fission, I need a minimum mass of fuel. Now, when I have a nuclear power station, I need to take care of the, um, the safety features, and there are four of them that I'm going to explain to you now. The first one is keeping the rate of the release of the fission energy constant. If I don't have my chain reaction under control, I can overheat the reactor and therefore I can get an explosion, just like what happened in Chernobyl. So I need to use control rods. The control rods are made of boron and they absorb neutrons. The depth of the control rods in the core is automatically adjusted to keep the number of neutrons in the core constant, meaning that I don't have these 2 to the power of n neutrons after n events to produce further and further fission, which could cause, as I told you, the reactor to overheat and explode. So I want them to be constant so that exactly one fission neutron per fission event on average goes on to produce further fission. If the rods are pushed in further, then absorb, they absorb more neutrons, so the number of fission events per second and the rate of release of fission is going to be reduced. Therefore, I'm not going to have the problem of overheating and then um, exploding, okay? Now, I need a moderator as well to ensure that fission happens. More details with animations on this is on that video. But the fission neutrons need to be slowed down significantly to cause the further fission. So if they have too much energy, I need to somehow, uh, somehow st um, um, decrease their speed because otherwise they would be traveling too fast to cause further fission. Okay? So the fission rods are surrounded by a moderator, something like heavy water, so that the neutrons are going to slow down by repeatedly colliding with the atoms or molecules that make the moderator. Then another safety feature is the reactor core. The reactor core is made of thick steel and it can withstand high pressures and temperatures, so no risk of exploding, right? The core walls absorb the beta radiation and some of the gamma radiation and the neutrons from the core, okay? And around the core, there is a very thick concrete walls which they absorb the gamma radiation and the neutrons that escape the main core. Because again, thick concrete or leads are the ones that can stop the radiation that has the highest range of all of them, which is gamma radiation, okay? Finally, there is the emergency shutdown. So it's an emergency shutdown system that is designed to insert the control rods fully into the core to stop the fission completely. Obviously, it doesn't stop uh, the fission straight away, but... Um, they will start absorbing more and more neutrons, therefore the rate of the fission reaction is going to decrease until it stopped. Now, the problems are not over yet. Although I have all these safety features to try to make it as safe as possible, after fission, I still have things to deal with, which is going to be the radiation. Now, the fuel rods are going to be much more radio uh, radioactive after being removed from the reactor than they were before. Okay? Before they are inserted, they contain the fuel, uranium-238, uranium-235, they can get put to some plutonium as well, and these emit only alpha radiation that is ab absorbed by the fuel cans. But after fission happen and after they are removed, they emit beta and gamma radiation that have a higher range. And this is due to the many neutron-rich fission products that were formed, okay? Plus, as a result of the absorption of the neutrons by the uranium-238 nuclei, the rods are going to contain plutonium. Now, the isotope of plutonium-239 uh, is a very high or very active alpha emitter. And alpha is of all the radiations, the one with the shortest range, but the maximum or the higher ionizing effect. 
meaning that if you inhale them, then it's going to go to your lungs. The lungs are a very sensitive organ, so they get very easily damaged. And because it's ionizing radiation, it can mutate or kill your cells, so it can give you a cancer. So this is um, you know, quite dangerous. Therefore, the fuel rods are going to be inserted and removed from the reactor by a remote handling device, kind of a robotic arms, OK? Then, after I have fission, I also need to think about the waste that I get. And the radioactive waste uh, can be high level, intermediate level, or low level. And it's going to be categorized as such according to the activity of the, the sample that I have there, okay? So, high level radioactive waste, where do I find it? Well, in the nuclear power stations, in the spent fuel rods. I can also find it in industry, hospitals, um, and universities. The way that I'm going to store it is by getting the fuel rods, especially the fuel rods where I'm fo focusing today. They are going to be stored underwater in cooling pumps for up to one year and then they are going to be transported and stored in sealed containers, in deep trenches and or in geological stable caverns. I obviously don't want to store them in a place that is unstable and therefore the radiation can all come out, okay? If I have unused uranium or plutonium, I can remove it from the fuel rods for further possible use. Then the intermediate level, which is in radioactive materials with a lower activity and the containers of radioactive materials, are going to be sealed in drums encased in concrete and stored in specifically constructed buildings with reinforced concrete walls. And finally, the low-level radioactive waste, which is, for example, the laboratory equipment and the protective clothing, is going to be sealed in metal drums and buried in large trenches. Now, this is what I do to the radioactive waste. I need to be very careful with the disposal, okay? It needs to be uh, in accordance to the leg legal regulations. It must be approved by the disposal companies. It must be stored safely in secure containers until the activity is insignificant. And it can take thousands of years for this to happen, okay? There used to be disposal by dilution. This has been banned. In case you don't know what disposal by dilution is, I'm saying it here, is diluting the radioactive water from the cooling system in large quantities of water and then dispersing it into the sea. That's what people used to do or they used to do, okay? This is now banned. However, the radioactive waste is still an issue because the long-term storage remains a problem as no one wants to have a storage in their own locality or you don't want a truck where the, the, the sealed drums are going to be in, passing through your locality, there could be an accident, the sealed drums could open up, a radioactive waste could be spread out. So you don't want that. So this is another reason why we are trying to get energy from fusion instead of fission because then the amount of radiation and the amount of um, health safety problems that we would have to worry about are going to be smaller or would be smaller, okay? All right, so uh, these are some questions from AQA if you want to attempt them. These ones will not come with answers because there are no calculations to these, so all the answers are within the video that I gave you, okay? So that's the last lesson on nuclear energy. More lessons on other stuff will come in, so until then, be happy and healthy. Bye!